Starter Pokemon have always been Grass, Fire, and Water type, but what if Game Freak had decided to use a different type trio instead? Hey everyone, Brandon here. A while back, we gave the Kanto starters a new type trio. Check that video out if you missed it. After this one, of course. So today, we're going to tackle the Johto starters. We gave the Kanto starters the type trio of Ground, Ice, and Steel. I wanted to try to use as many unique type combinations as possible for these videos, so this time we're going to go with the type trio of Rock, Flying, and Fighting. If you want more videos like this, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe so I know to make more. Also, all of the art in today's video was made by the incredible Elisteva076, so make sure to go check them out. Starting us off is how almost every regional dex begins, with the Grass Starter. So for Chikorita, I decided to give it the Rock type. With it being based on a sauropod and the prehistoric inspired fossil Pokemon typically having the rock type, I figured it would be a good fit. But I wanted to take it a step further than that and take inspiration from a very striking rock I haven't seen featured in Pokemon yet, Lapis Lazuli. So first up is Lazarita. Just like last video, since this is an alternate universe situation, the names would obviously be different, but I wanted to keep some sense of familiarity, so I tried to keep the naming scheme similar to the originals. Anyway, rather than the leaf and buds, Lazarita instead has these stones and a vein of lapis, which are meant to reflect ancient Akkadian jewelry, which prominently featured this semi-precious stone. Unlike most rock-type Pokemon, Lazarita actually prefer to be out of caves in the sunlight. The gold flecks in their stones shines a pleasant, uplifting light when hit by the sun. This references Lapis Lazuli's etymology, with its name coming from Lapis, which in Latin means stone, and the Latin Lazulum or the Arabic Lazard, meaning sky or heaven, which when combined loosely translates to the stone of heaven. One reason I love these kinds of videos is getting to give a fresh take on these old Pokemon. Which reminds me of today's sponsor, HelloFresh. As someone who eats plant-based and is a single father, sometimes it's difficult for me to cook good, fresh, nutritious meals while keeping up with what life has to offer. That's why I'm thankful for HelloFresh, which takes the hassle out of mealtime by delivering pre-portioned ingredients and recipes right to my door. HelloFresh sent me some vegan chickpea coconut curry, which was so delicious and so easy to make. And if you're familiar with vegan recipes, that isn't always the case. It saved me time when cooking, more time I could spend out of the kitchen and instead eating this delicious meal with my daughter. And as a plant-based eater, I try to be conscious of my food waste, which HelloFresh's pre-portioned ingredients help cut down on by at least 23% compared to grocery shopping. Speaking of, HelloFresh is actually 28% cheaper than going to the grocery store, and 25% cheaper than takeout, which I've also been trying to cut down on. So use my link or go to HelloFresh.com and use code POGMAGICJUN16 to get 16 free meals plus free shipping. Once you click, my description will live update to count the purchases. Thanks so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to it. At level 16, Lazarita evolves into Lapis. Like I said, I tried to keep the same naming scheme, so if some of these names sound like a bit of a stretch, that's why. In any case, the necklace and headpiece of Lazarita has evolved into these lapis bricks and head jewelry on Lapis. These bricks are representative of the lapis bricks that make up the Ishtar Gate, an enormous gate of lapis and gold that was constructed in the ancient city of Babylon and was dedicated to the goddess Ishtar, a goddess of love, war, and fertility. She is also known as the Queen of Heaven, which ties back into Lapis's heavenly etymology. The Chikorita line and Bayleaf in particular has always felt fairly feminine to me, especially with Ash's iconic base leaf in the anime being female, so such a strong feminine goddess being tied to this concept felt like a perfect fit to me. The bricks around Lapis's neck will shed twice a year. These leftover bricks have been used since ancient times to build monuments to legendary Pokemon. Being inside one of these monuments makes you feel a connection to these great Pokemon. In this universe, the Brass Tower of Johto never burned down because it was made of Lapis bricks. At level 32, Lapis evolves into Megamorph. This Pokemon's draconic features and commanding presence take inspiration from a creature found upon the walls of the Ishtar Gate, the Mushusu. This mythical creature has the head, body, and tail of a snake, but with the front legs of a lion and the back legs of an eagle. While Megamorph doesn't exactly match that description, it has features of this beast such as the head crest and lengthy curly tail. The bricks around the neck of Lapis have fused together upon evolution to form a gateway, referencing the Ishtar Gate itself, but also sort of the gate around Arceus as well. Elisteva did a really great job of making this gate evoke the same feeling as the neck flower of Meganium. Megamorph's name is a play on Metamorphic, which is the type of rock that Lapis Lazuli is. Great leaders of the past are said to have worn the crest of a Megamorph, 
Bearing the load of this heavy object was a sign of strength and leadership, and wearing this crest was rumored to allow you to commune with legendary Pokemon. Next up, we have the Cyndaquil line, which I decided to give the Flying type. I initially chose this type for this line because it was the last one left out of the trio when giving the other two their types, but as I went along and researched more, this concept really came together well. So here is Windaquil. That name just works way too well, and I am very proud of it. Replacing the fiery quills of Cyndaquil with feathers felt like such a natural fit to me, and Elisteva added in these two little whisker-like quills, which I think helped separate the design a little more from the original. Windaquil is actually based on a mythical creature from Mapuche mythology called the Colo Colo, which is described as a feathered rat-like creature. The feathers of Windaquil can change from soft to blade-like when it feels threatened. Being pricked by one of these feathers results in fatigue and sudden emotional outbursts. At level 17, Windaquil evolves into Quillwind. While its name might just sound like Quill plus Wind, it is actually a pun off the word Tailwind, which in this pose you can see Quillwind riding on one. Upon evolution, the feathers have taken a pattern minorly resembling that of a Native American chief's headdress. Quillwind can perk up these feathers or flatten them, much like a cockatoo. They use them to help adjust their speed while gliding, and are known to do tricks and stunts while in the air to try to impress a potential mate. At level 36, Quillwind evolves into Typhaloon. Typhlosion already had Typhoon as a part of its name, so instead of Explosion, I mixed in the Colo Colo. The Colo Colo inspiration doesn't stop there, as Typhaloon is also inspired by another famous Colo Colo. Colo. But instead of a feathered rat, this was a person that was a Toqui or war leader of the Mapuche people during the Araucao War against Spanish conquistadors. The two feathers on its face are also inspired by Colo Colo's fellow vice Toqui, Lautaro, who is famously depicted with these two feathers upon his head. Since Typhlosion already has another form, I wanted to do something a bit different with Typhaloon's design to make it stand out. So rather than giving Typhaloon some kind of element around its neck, I opted to make the design more bottom heavy, which most porcupines actually Actually look like with their quills anyway, and it also looks like the cape of Lautaro. Typhaloon can fly but prefer to stay on the ground, teaching Windaquil and Quillwind the lessons it has learned from its life experience, like the best places to fly, how to navigate certain air currents, and the like. Moving on to our final line, we have Totodile, which I opted to give the fighting type. With alligators and crocodiles being known for their powerful bite and their vicious ambush style of attack, I felt the fighting type would fit well on them. But for this line, I took specific inspiration from a big bad crocodile known for its aggression, the Nile Crocodile. So with that said, here is Totonile. This isn't the cute, friendly, derpy Totodile you know and love. This guy has the aggro levels of a Paris in Legends Arceus, and will charge you if you get too close. As the Nile Crocodile is named after the Nile River, which is most known for being associated with Egypt, we took the little eye mark that Totodile had and made it into the famous Egyptian eye. The yellow belly stripe that Totodile had is now a pattern that reflects bandages, but Elisteva managed to sneak in the symbol for the fighting type as well with its left fist. At level 18, Totodile evolves into... Chirona, with its name coming from the capital of Egypt, Cairo. The bandages of Totonile have evolved into an armor-like appearance, and the new bandages around its tail were meant to bring to mind the famous mummies of Egypt, which mummified crocodiles have been discovered before. The bandage along its snout also refers to how young crocs have their jaws banded shut when they're being handled by zookeepers for demonstrative purposes. Chironaw will strike swiftly out at prey, but if they miss, they will throw a temper tantrum, alerting other potential prey to its presence. At level 30, Chironaw evolves into Ferroligator. Yet another name that works way too well. The armor-like appearance of Chirona has become full-on armor for Ferroligator. This refers to the crocodile's hardened hide, but also the Egyptian god Sobek a god of crocodiles, pharaonic power, and military prowess, with those three things being cornerstones of this line's design. Those mummified crocs I mentioned earlier were actually thought to be offerings to Sobek, which you can see that Feroligator's tail still has the bandages on it, leading to a spiked tail. And if you look closely at the tail's shape, you can see it creates the visage of the Pyramids of Giza. Feroligator is a master of ambush, able to strike with swift ferocity. It usually hides in the tall grass of Route 45, with that route's long river evoking that of the Nile. Just like the last video, I decided to give this group a new theme. Johto is a region steeped in history and has major themes of unity within its story and Pokemon. I mean, this region brought us the friendship mechanic after all. So, in Japanese history, there are three individuals known as the Unifiers of Japan. Ieyasu Tokugawa, Oda Nobunaga, and Toyotomi Hideyoshi. 
these three historical figures are actually found as characters in the game Pokemon Conquest. With Ieyasu using Steel and Rock types, Nobunaga using Rayquaza, which is partly Flying type, and Hideyoshi using Fire and Fighting types. So each of these starters represent them. But it doesn't end there. As you can no doubt tell, these Pokemon are all very much not Japanese in origin. Well, that is because they're actually inspired by three unifiers from other countries. Megamorph is inspired by what is considered to be the first empire, the Akkadian Empire, and its ruler, King Sargon. His conquest of the Sumerian city-states unified this ancient Mesopotamian civilization. As I stated before, Typhaloon is based on a few Tokui, but Lautaro in particular was credited as the military leader who managed to bring together the Mapuche people and teach them the combat tactics they needed to become a successful unified army. And Feroligator is based on Narmer, who many scholars consider to be the unifier of Egypt and the pharaoh of its first dynasty. And as you may have noticed, none of these Pokemon have a secondary type. I considered making them all part dragon as they all have a draconic appearance and the Colo Colo is said to be part serpent in some tales, but I ultimately decided on keeping them single typed. And that's what a differently typed starter trio might look like. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.